Hello there, Calc Kids. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. This is Mr. Bean, and today's lesson, we're going to focus in on the second derivative and how we can use test values within the second derivative to tell us if we have relative extreme, a relative max, relative min. It's kind of cool. I actually really like the second derivative because many times it's less work than the first derivative test. So to start off, we have this function here going on, and I want us to identify the extrema. So let's put, just put some dots where the relative max and the relative min are. So start this off there. And then what do we know about the value of f prime at each of these extrema? Okay, so think through that. f prime, we know, I'm going to put it up here because I'm going to write something underneath it. We know that f prime of x is going to equal zero right there. It has a horizontal tangent. And so that's also going to equal zero right here. So the first derivative is zero at both this max and the min. What do we know about the value of the second derivative at each of these extrema? So the second derivative that we've been practicing helps us understand concavity of a function. So right here, the, con the function f is concave down. Therefore, we know here at this maximum point that the second derivative, but two little tick marks there, the second derivative is uh, concave down, so that means it is negative. I'm going to say that it is less than zero. And then this one, it is concave up, so the second derivative is positive, so greater than zero. And these two things combined, when we say the first derivative is zero and the second derivative is negative, that is the second derivative test. It justifies for us that we have a maximum point. Or vice versa, if we say that the first derivative is zero but the second derivative is positive, then that tells us we have a concave up situation with a horizontal tangent and we have a minimum. So that's what this is referring to. If it's concave up, it is going up like that, and we have a minimum. Now notice I said that you have to suppose that, the, that you have some value where the first derivative is equal to zero. So that has to be true first. It's not just any critical point, it's the critical points where the derivative equals zero, not where the derivative does not exist. Okay, so make sure you understand that. For the second derivative to work, we're only talking about when the first derivative equals zero. But then the second one, the second derivative is less than zero, means we are concave down, and therefore you have a maximum point. All right, let's do this. Now, I know I didn't give you a lot of room. I'm so sorry about that, but I hate just wasting a bunch of paper if we don't have to. So write small. I'm going to write over here on the margin pretty small, and I'm going to say that the first derivative of this, because I have to figure out if the first derivative ever equals zero. If I can't find the first derivative equaling zero, I can't use the second derivative test. All right, so first derivative equals 4x cubed, and then we're bringing down that 2, so minus 4x. Okay, now when does this thing equal 0? Well, I can factor this. I'm going to factor out a 4x, and then I'm left with x squared minus 1, and then that equals 0 when this is 0, so that's x equals 0, and then if you solve this, add 1, take the square root, or factor it again, minus 1 plus 1, you're going to get x equals plus or minus 1. All right, so here's all of our candidates for, for our relative extrema. Next up is to find the second derivative. And I let's see here, take the derivative of the first. So the second derivative of f is going to be 12x squared minus 4. Okay, I don't need to take the second derivative and set it equal to 0. I don't need that. I'm not looking for points of inflection. What I'm doing is I'm just trying to figure out if it's concave up or down at these three points. So that means I take the second derivative and evaluate it at these three points. Again, I hope you have enough room there. My apologies if you're starting to run out. The second derivative of this one. Okay, there we go. So I'm testing these three possibilities of uh, these candidates for extrema. So the second derivative tells me if I plug a zero in here, I get that whole thing cancels. I get negative four. Negative 4 is less than 0. See, I don't care that it's the value is negative 4. I just care that it's negative. That's the important part. So just try this one, negative 1. Well, negative 1 squared is 12. 12 minus 4 is 8. And again, I don't care if the, the value is exactly 8. What I care about is that it's positive. Because that tells me that if it's positive, remember, it's concave up. If it's negative, it's concave down. So f of 1, plug it in. 12, 1, minus 4, that's also... 8, positive, and that's bigger than 0. Okay, now you can write out our answers with our justification. So we're going to have a relative, uh, what's this one? Relative, it's concave down, so that creates a maximum point. So it's a relative max at x equals 0 because, now we have to say two reasons. 
because the first derivative at the value of zero equals zero, at the x value of zero, equals zero, and the second derivative at the x value of zero is less than zero. It means it's concave down. So there's my answer, relative max at x equals zero, and my justification is the two things that the first derivative is zero and the second derivative is negative. Our other two answers, so we're gonna have a relative, this one is concave up, so that's a relative min at x equals negative one, and that's because f prime of, at what x value? Negative one. f prime of negative one was zero, we knew that, and the second derivative at negative one is greater than zero. So it's concave up, that creates a minimum. And then the last one is exactly the same thing, it's a relative min, but this time it's at x equals one, but we have the same justification. The first derivative at one is zero, and the second derivative at one is greater than zero, creating a concave up situation, which creates the minimum. Okay, that is the whole thing for first, for second derivative test. Uh, let's do one more of these before we, I show you an example of something that's a little different. On this problem, we're doing the same thing we've been doing before. So we're just gonna take the first derivative of this thing, set it equal to zero, and solve because we need to find our critical points. So let's get the, make sure we have the first derivative. So the first derivative of this thing, notice that the x is not under the radical. So just be careful about that, that it's just the square root of two for the first term. And then of course the derivative of cosine is going to be negative. So since that's already negative, it changes the sign. So now you have the first derivative here. I'm gonna have you pause and work the entire thing out. So find the critical points, plug it into the second derivative, which means you have to find the second derivative first, plug it into the second derivative and somehow fit it on a piece of paper where I did hardly gave you any room. I apologize about that, but I was trying to keep your notes down to one page. Uh, okay, so pause the video now and work out this problem. I'll have the answer appear in just a second. And I've put my answer here in this nice red box. That's my answers with my justifications. And you can see all my work here, my finding my critical points. There's my second derivative, plugging these critical points into the second derivative to verify if second derivative is positive or negative. Because remember, then that helps me to know if it's negative, it's concave up, and I have a maximum. That's what this first one is. And then the seven pi over four, it's positive second derivative, so concave up, and that gives me the minimum. All right, so go ahead and just pause the video and copy that down. If you didn't get the right answers, make sure you have the right thing written down. For our last problem, I just wanted to point out that sometimes you only have one critical point. So when you have one critical point and the critical point is an extremum, so a max or a min, that's a fancy word for max or min, then it is an absolute extremum. Okay, so if you have one critical point and we know it's an extremum, then it's an absolute as opposed to just a relative. Now let's try this one out just so you can see what I'm saying because in the practice, it's nice to be able to say that it's an absolute if you only have one. So let's take the first derivative. We get f prime of x equals a uh, product rule. So negative one for my first part. And then I'm gonna, in fact, I'm gonna pause my recording and just have my derivative appear. And here's our first derivative. What I did is I factored out a negative e to the x over four. I factored that out of both terms, so that left me with this step here. Okay, so now we're trying to figure out when does the first derivative equal a zero? Well, this will never equal zero because it's an exponential, so we don't have to worry about that, but this one can. So if you subtract one, you get one fourth x equals negative one, and then multiply by four, x equals negative four. So this is our candidate for being an absolute max or min. So now we need to take the second derivative. Uh, let's see here, I'm gonna go up here a little ways. The second derivative of f is going to equal the derivative of this one. Okay, so let's take a look at this line right here because that's the one we are now taking the derivative. So this first piece of it, its derivative is just gonna be negative e raised to the x over four times the chain rule will give us the one fourth because the derivative of x over four. And then I am going to subtract and then I have a one fourth. I'm gonna put the one fourth in front. So notice what I'm gonna do here. I now have the minus one fourth. This is the product rule. So I need product rule. So one fourth times the product rule of this thing. So that's gonna give me the derivative of x is one. The and then I leave alone e raised to the x over four plus x is left alone. And then I do the derivative 
of that one, which is e raised to the x over 4 times 1 fourth. There's so many things going on here. Chain rule, product rule, all of this stuff to keep track of. What you don't know is this is like the third time I've recorded this video because I kept messing this up. Okay, so now let's keep moving on. We get the second derivative. Let's see if we can simplify this now. Is equal to every one of these terms has an e raised to the x over 4. So you get e raised to the x over 4, e raised to the x over 4. And they're each negative because when I take this negative 1 fourth and distribute, they're all negative. So if I factor out a negative e to the x over 4, it will make this significantly easier to work with. So that negative is now gone. So when I distribute the 1 fourth, it's actually a positive. So positive 1 fourth, and then it's that e is gone, e to the x over 4th, because I brought it out to the front. And then plus, I have that 1 4th times x, that is distributed, undistributed out, it's factored out, and then I still have that 1 4th there. So now let's, uh, we've got the second derivative, let's evaluate it. I want to evaluate it at that critical point of negative 4. Because the whole idea is, is it positive or negative? Is it concave up or concave down? So I plug this in, I get negative e to the negative 4 over 4 is just negative 1. Now I can start adding some things up here. 1 fourth plus 1 fourth is just 1 half. Uh, plus 1 fourth times 1 fourth is 1 16th times x. And x in this case is negative 4. So now what is this going to equal? This is a negative number. The reciprocal just makes it 1 over e, but it's still a negative number. So I have a negative 1 over e times, and now what do I have here? 1 half minus 4 sixteenths is 1 fourth. Okay, so inside here is positive, outside is negative, so the whole thing is negative. We gotta squeeze that in, sorry about that. So now we can say, is it a, is it a max or a min? So we know that it's concave down, so it's gotta be a maximum, but we also know it's absolute. It is an absolute maximum. And the question is, why do we know that? Because if we only have one critical point, it is an absolute. If it's concave down and there's no other critical points but this one, then it's the highest it's going to be. So it's an absolute uh, maximum because, oh, I should need to say where? At x equals negative 4. Because, and then we can say because the first derivative evaluated at negative 4 is equal to 0. And the second thing, because there's two parts to this, is that the second derivative evaluated at negative 4 is less than zero. And that completes our second derivative test. Okay, so rock that mastery check and I will see you back in the next lesson.